Hey, good morning or good afternoon and welcome to Preparing for Sunday where I begin to look at the upcoming Sunday's lectionary text together with you. So this Sunday's lectionary text is from the seventh chapter of Mark. It's verses 24 through 37. This follows directly upon last week's reading where we got the first part, pieces of the first part of Mark chapter 7. You remember that that follows uh, behind uh, the feeding of the 5,000, which occurred in Jesus' sort of home area. This is an area where he would have felt comfortable. Then we took a five or six week lectionary excursus trip into the bread of life text from John chapter 6 which just sort of added context to what Jesus did uh, in Mark uh, with the feeding of the 5,000. Then last week we jumped back to Mark 7 and I, rem I talked to you a little bit about how this wasn't relief from food because it had to do with washing hands and it dealt with Jesus' conflict with the people in his sort of more comfortable home area. Now we get to Mark 7, 24 through 37. And what we have here is a consequence of Jesus' conflict at home. What we have in Mark 7, 24 through 37, in the story of Mark, is a consequence of Jesus' conflict at home. He has shown that he has power over nature, he has the power to care for others, to feed them, uh, but we were reminded last week that some people look sideways at this, uh, that, that uh, the power may or may not be what people expect, and so the Judean authorities are beginning to question him in his home territory, even though he can feed people, the, the attention isn't on what's being accomplished. It's on the glass half empty, like how is this guy accomplishing it? And Jesus has run into some conflict in, in Galilee. And now by Mark 7, 24 through 37, he's pushing out into a different area. It tells us here that he goes off into Tyre and then this is in the, it's, which is a region sort of next to Galilee. And, and then by verse 27, I think it is, he's pushing into Sidon. Uh, so these now are areas outside of where he would have felt comfortable. He's feeding people in his home area, but he's running into some power issues. Uh, people are, 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 like the Pharisees and scribes are sort of saying, well, we should have been the ones who told you how all the feeding happened, and we should have coordinated it. And so Jesus ran into some conflict, and he's now out into an area of people that are different from him. There are some racial tones here in Mark 7, 24 through 37, uh, Mark tells us that the race of this woman is that she is Syrophoenician, she's different. Jesus is now into a different territory. The way that I'll talk about with that with you is to say, uh, this, this, say it this way. Living liminally. Living liminally. So at this point, you can pause the video, you can read Mark 7, 24 through 37, and then you can also look up the word liminal, which is a word that I've talked about amongst the people of St. Stephen before, but it's a hard word, you might want to look it up. To me, this story is about living liminally. So give this a pause, read Mark 7, 24 through 37, possibly look up the word liminally. I call this the section of living liminally, all right? Okay, so welcome back. You've paused this. You've read a little bit of, of where Jesus has moved into. Maybe you've looked up the word liminal. This is the story of Jesus living liminally. Jesus had a place where he was comfortable. He's so comfortable that he is feeding people. He's caring for people. 
but he's beginning to discover, oh, who are you? You're not feeding him the way I would. You had the circle tables out instead of the square ones, and you had them go counterclockwise instead of clockwise. And he's run into all sorts of problems with the scribes and Pharisees. So now, while he talks to them, he talks to the scribes and Pharisees last week's text about hand washing and hearts and about boundaries. He talks about the theory of pushing boundaries and why it's okay to do that with the scribes and Pharisees. Well, this week it's not so much talk about pushing boundaries as it is behavior now of pushing boundaries. He's living into the talk of it, of hearts. And Jesus is in this story dealing with all sorts of boundary issues. He's in a place where he's a little off kilter. Um, as a matter of fact, the people of Galilee, where Jesus was initially, and the people of Tyre were somewhat competitive people. They're like rival towns. Uh, both of these areas are agricultural, and they dealt with uh, trade and things together, but they're different types of people. Again, Mark 7 talks about racially different. Uh, Mark talks about that. Uh, I don't know how, to what extent that's true, but Mark uses that term race. Um, uh, and so these are like rival towns. And Jesus has gone from the place where he's comfortable, from like uh, Stowe to like Hudson. Like from one place, Stowe into Cuyahoga Falls. Uh, just a little different place where the rivalry is stoked. And in the first part of this reading, Jesus is approached by the Syrophoenician woman. Mark always doubles down. Greek, okay, we hear ya. Greek, but also Syrophoenician. We, he wants to make really clear, Mark always doubles down on things and makes things really clear. Uh, this person is from Hudson, a rich Hudson, not like Stowe person. Mark is really doubling down on the differences, and Jesus is living liminally now. He is out of where he was com comfortable. He said, boy, you know, this should be about hearts, not about tradition. And now he's crossing over into the reality of what that might look like. And here's the difficulty with living liminally. The first half of this, he's approached by the Syrophoenician woman, and he calls her a name. He calls her a dog, and he says, I should be feeding those other people first, not you. Remember, these are two agricultural territories. Feeding the Galileans that are agricultural and not the people from Tyre that are agricultural. He's getting into some trade issues here and some other stuff that's going on. Uh, and there's some racial things going on here. There's some competitive things going on here. And he's crossed over the boundary because he knows that's the thing to do. But he's speaking to the Syrophoenician woman like he's still over here. And I'm going to talk some this Sunday about this first part of the story. Uh, the first, because we get two stories from Mark this week, two healing stories. This one of the Syrophoenician woman is the content of the sermon this Sunday, so you'd have to come to church or, or watch videos uh, of worship to, to hear me explore that further in preaching. I'm going to leave it at that, that he calls her a name, and then I'm going to talk more about that Sunday. Now I'm going to leap over that, because I'm going to go back to that Sunday, and I'm going to leap to the second healing. And it's got some interesting pieces and parts to it. Again, Jesus is living liminal. He has moved out of Tyre, and he moves into Sidon. This is, he's all over the place, it's willy-nilly, but he's still living liminally. This is not Galilee, where he's at home. He's told them it's about hearts, not following all, all the rules properly, eat counterclockwise, or uh, have the table like with the salad first and the hot food second. Uh, we don't care about all those rules. We care about meeting needs. He's talked about it. Now he's living it. In living it, in the first part, he's had a little bit of issue because he's still talking to people like he's back here. Uh, living liminally is like this confusing time. You're in a different place, but you're talking like you're in the old place. This would be like uh, telling people that uh, we have a vaccine. It's all clear. Oh, wait, we still have to mask. The confusion that arises out of all of this would be similar to the confusion that Jesus uh, is confronting. He's living liminally, just like you and I are, okay? So in the second part, he's approached by a man who cannot speak. He, is, he cannot hear, and he cannot speak. He is deaf, and he is mute, all right? 
So lots of interesting things happen in this part. This is uh, verses, I think, 27 through 31, something like that. Lots of interesting things. Jesus spits. Now remember, he has just talked back home to the scribes and Pharisees about washing your hands and kettles and eating properly. Now he's spitting. And we live in the COVID era all these years later. So we know that spitting, weird practice. Uh, but in the ancient world, people thought that spitting, that saliva had healing properties. Uh, and this would be like uh, trying to heal a wound by licking it, like animals sometimes do or something. Uh, so he's spitting. The scripture does not tell us where he spits. If he spits directly onto, the, onto this guy, or if he spits on his fingers. But it's really unclean what he's doing. Back home he would have gotten in all sorts of trouble for this. But when you live liminally in behavior, you can do some different things. He spits, let's say it's on his fingers, he touches the ears and maybe the tongue of this guy. Really not clean, would have gotten him in all sorts of trouble. But it heals this guy. And then there's some interesting things here about this living liminally stuff. He says this hard word. If you've read this, if you paused it a minute ago and read this text, uh, ephaphtha, uh, or something to that extent, I always have trouble saying that word. Uh, he uses a sort of Hebrew word in speaking to a Gentile. So again, uh, cleanliness, not cleanliness, what language he's speaking, uh, and then some interesting things. This guy's deaf and can't speak very well. How would he uh, know that this is not a Gentile word? Uh, how would he know if it's a Hebrew word or if this is the first word he's ever hearing? Maybe he would just be like, this is normal, this is how everybody talks, even though people may or may not have been speaking that way in the territory Jesus is in. Remember, though, these towns traded and were rivals, so maybe they knew each other's language, maybe they didn't, maybe this is the first word this guy's ever hearing, and it's not the one of his own culture. There's just all sorts of boundary things here, and Jesus is in the middle of that. And then, right after Jesus heals him, he heals his ability to hear, he heals his ability to speak in this really unclean, like, passing on COVID way. And he tells the guy, hey, I've healed you. You can speak, you can hear. Don't speak or, or, or talk anyway, though, even though I just fixed it. Don't tell anybody what happened. He doesn't really want to get in trouble like he did back in Galilee. He doesn't, he, he wants to serve the meal, not get in an argument about why people are moving around the table counterclockwise, right? He wants to bring the reality of God's kingdom not get in a power struggle uh, that has defined everywhere he goes the healings that he does. So he tells him not to use the gift that he gave him. God being God, God's kingdom being bigger than us, the guy goes ahead and says it anyway. This is a text about boundaries. I'm going to talk about that some. That will be sort of the theme or sort of the undercurrent of the preaching that we uh, will we'll, like, share together, the word we will share together on Sunday. But I want you to think about this. God, Jesus, is in a place where comfort and boundaries are stretched. He's living liminally. You and I know what it's like to live liminally and where boundaries are stretched. We do this all the time. Uh, maybe for work they ask us to go to a meeting or we meet with someone else in their office. And so we're living in a place where we're trying to get our bearings. Uh, I talked a few minutes ago. We have the vaccine, it's all clear. Oh wait, maybe we should be masking, maybe we shouldn't. We should certainly shouldn't be spitting on each other. Um, uh, you know, we're living liminally. Uh, we, we know that there's all this new technology, uh, you know, but we aren't always quite sure how to use it properly, uh, and our kids still have to help us sort it all out. Um, we know that we can do Bible studies by video, but we're not always sure how those work or if they're what we want them to be, we're living liminally. The idea is that Jesus experienced the same thing and that this is part of our life. And the question of it is, is do we see this as part of our discipleship? Do we see Jesus, do we see God moving through living liminally in God's own life? And walking through that and still being God and still sorting it out, even from the first half while calling uh, this woman a name? Um, 
Do we see that as God guiding us and keeping us? Do we look at our living liminally, living in between, living in the boundaries, as an opportunity to uh, share our gifts and to learn and to grow? Do we see that as an opportunity to be dependent on God and to be in sort of mutual dependency on God with other people? They're living liminally too. Do we see this as a time of mutuality and dependence or do we get anxious and do we fill ourselves with all sorts of complaint and finger pointing? Often, as people of faith, we slide into the latter. We go back to trying to want to live in the other place and we point all sorts of fingers when this new place doesn't look like it. God, the story of the gospel, is trying to present this as an opportunity. How often do we see where we live in this in-between time as an opportunity? An opportunity for others, an opportunity for us, an opportunity to become more clear on the power of God to move everywhere, more clear of God's power to work in our lives, more clear of the power of God to work in the lives of others. So, like a lot of the gospel, this asks us to grow. And it asks us to see that God knows what our lives look like and how in between they can feel. It asks us whether we believe that we do indeed die to our old self and are guided to a new place by God. Whether we're guided through all this questionable stuff of life and that we're in God's hands. This is the question of the gospel. Do you believe that Jesus is who Jesus says he is? Do you believe that that matters for your life? We live liminally. God knows how this feels. God has been there too. And God promises to pave a way through this and that it can benefit the stranger and it can benefit you and I. Do we see living liminally as a possibility? Do we approach it with confidence and faithfulness? Or do we slip into anxiety and finger pointing? This is the question of the gospel, and I hope to prayerfully consider that more with you this upcoming Sunday, September, I think, 5th, Labor Day weekend. Uh, and I hope to see you and to think about that more, where I will look with you all more closely at the first story of this gospel, uh, the story of the Syrophoenician woman, boundaries, Jesus uh, interacting in them, and what this means for us. So hopefully this is helpful for a little bit of background so that when you hear the gospel, it strikes a chord, you hear some of the themes in it. Hopefully uh, it helps sort of uh, hear some of the themes in the word that we share together. And as always, I hope this preparing for Sunday guides and keeps you into our gathering when we're together uh, this upcoming week whether that be digitally or in person. I hope that you stay safe, that you know that while we are living in this crazy in-between time, that where God loves us and keeps us, we need not always see this as an anxious, scary time. Indeed, you and I can also see this as a time of growth and of increasing uh, relationship and dependence on God. All right? Stay safe. I hope to see you Sunday. Uh, I'll talk to you soon.